Hi, Timothy Unkert here. In this video, I want to talk about the Cocoon Editor, which is a text editor for Linux in the terminal. Now, I am in this directory called Blogs. I've been working on this resource for Vim color schemes that I'm going to put up on my site, Unkert Media, shameless plug. And what I've done is I converted the markdown file to HTML. I still have to work on the markdown file, but just for purposes here, that's what I did. So I'm going to open this file with Cocoon. And to do that, I'm going to type K-A-K, -K, CAC, and then the name of the file, and that will open the file. Okay. Now I've set it in my CAC RC. I'll talk about this later on in the video, how to set up your CAC RC. Uh, I've set that the color scheme is Groovebox. Okay. It, that's one of the default themes that comes along with it. Um, I also have this plugin, which is a mode line similar to uh, sort of similar to airline and vim uh, that you can set up that's a cocoon plug plug in there okay so let's first talk about simple movements so the keys h j k and l they simply move around the document as you would in vim so j moves you down k moves you up l moves you right and h moves you left now you can combine these with counts so i could do something like 5j to move down five lines or 6k to move up six lines. I could also do something like 10l to move right 10 lines or 12h to move left or left 12 characters and right 10 characters. Okay. Characters for h and l, lines for j and k. Okay. Uh, when you start with Cocoon, you start in normal mode. And just like Vim, you can type I to move in insert mode, or you can type I, uh, type O to move down below the current line into insert mode, and then you can start typing. Now, by default, you'll see that I was getting that auto completion stuff, the box coming up. That's out of Cocoon, out of the box, right? Um, I've set up mine so I can start to type. Let's say I start to type with M and I can hit tab to go through this list and I can do shift tab to move up. So I could do tab to material box and then keep typing, right? Now I'm not going to do anything with this document. Um, this was just for demonstration. So I'm going to leave that. I could undo it with you if I wanted to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> To move around the document, it's a little bit different than Vim. For instance, in Cocoon, to move to the top of the document in normal mode, you're going to do GK. Okay, And you may have noticed this thing called Clippy just kind of popped up real fast. Um, if I type G, it'll pop up and it gives me these completions. So it says if I want to go to the bottom of the buffer or the buffer end, I'm going to do either GJ or GE. So if I type J, goes to the end. Let's go back to the top, GK. Uh, if I want to do GE, that also goes to the bottom of the buffer. Now let's go up a little bit in this file here. And say I was here and I wanted to go to the bottom of the window. I can do G and then B. Okay, so GB. If I want to go to the top of the window, I can do GT. And if I want to go to the center of the window, I can do GC. So it's a little bit different than Vim. In Vim, you either do capital H for the top, uh, capital M for the middle, or capital L for the bottom. So a little bit different that way. Now, GK and GJ in Vim, if you have wrapping lines, that moves you up and down through the wrapping part of the line. Not quite the same in Cocoon. Okay. Another thing that's a little bit different, let's say I wanted to delete this div class this line here. In Vim, I would do DD. In Cocoon, I'm going to do XD. Okay. I can do U to undo that, but um, that's what I would do. Now, if I wanted to copy this line, I would do YY in Vim. In Cocoon, I'm going to do XY. Now, to paste, if I type P, it's going to paste the line right below where I'm at. So, as you see, it pasted the same line right below. So, I could do, and I could do a count. I could do like 4P, and it would do it you know, four times. And I just did two U for two undos. So that's 
pretty much the same as in Vim, okay? In Vim, you have visual mode, so you can type V from normal mode and highlight everything. In Cocoon, the way you do that, let's say if I wanted to highlight the next five lines down, I'd hold down the shift and just use the J to highlight the lines. And then, you know, I could highlight out with L like so. So that's how I would do it in Cocoon, okay? A little bit different. Uh, in normal mode, I can go and run commands. And if I do the colon, just like in Vim, I can run commands like W to save the file, uh, Q to quit. Um, and I could tab through these commands as well. Okay, so I can find the commands. If I start typing, I can do add highlighter. And let's see, if I do that, then I hit a space. And then I would go to something like global, hit a space, and well, what do I want to do? Do I want to do maybe just number lines? Okay, so now I changed in my cocoon initial file or init file, which is cacrc, I had relative number lines. So I just put on top of it the regular number lines there. Okay, so it shows up next to the relative line. So I have both of those. Um, that might be a bit much, but... Uh, so you can see at the top of the document here, this is the relative line number. So this line is one down from the top, but we have one, two. This is the absolute number of the line. You could do that in Cocoon if you really wanted to. Um, you can do stuff. Let's say I want to go here and run comment line. Uh, nope, I would have to. Okay, and then hit a space. Uh, let's comment line nine. No, uh, I would have to explore that a little bit more, but that's another command you can run. There's a whole bunch. I mean, you can type Y and you can see, well, I have try on key, execute keys, change directory, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, one thing that's nice and easy to change is color scheme. So you can do color scheme, do a space, and you can tab through all of these and you can change to a different color scheme if you wanted to go to a different color scheme. Okay, let's take a look at the Cocoon RC. So I'm gonna write and quit out of there and I'm gonna go into my home directory, into my .config file, and you're gonna have your config for your CAC RC in a folder that you need to create that's called CAC. Okay, so I'm in that folder now, so now I'll open my CAC RC. It's very short, but I'll show you what I have set. So I have a color scheme groove box here. Uh, that's the color scheme of the lock box. Uh, I also have this setting here for tab stop and indent width at two. Uh, if I'm doing front end stuff, I want a spacing up about two spaces for my indents. Down here, these uh, lines here are all for the autocomplete with tab. So that's to get it from, instead, the autocomplete, you can use Control N or Control P. So let me start, uh, let me go down here and insert. And let's say I started to type C-O-N, you can see config types up. So I could autocomplete it and just keep typing. Or, um, so that was with tab. So I can tab this way. I can do Shift tab to go up. Um, but if you didn't have my config set up, what you could do, is control N to go down and control P to go up, like in Vim, okay? Um, so that's an autocomplete setting there. And I just deleted that line and the line above with XD. So remember, XD versus DD. All right, uh, what other stuff do I have here? Okay, so these next two lines here are for plug.cac, which is the plugin manager for Cocoon. Uh, let's go and open up a browser here and we'll see that this is the plug.cac page. And to install it, what you do is you copy this into your terminal here when you're in your home directory, just run that. And then you'll see you'll put these lines in your Cocoon RC, and then you're ready to install plugins that are from GitHub with the author name and the repository. You can also install plugins, say from GitLab or somewhere else with the full URL instead of the author and the repository name. Now, there's also these lines here. So if you wanna place your Cocoon RC on GitHub, 
and just want to grab it from GitHub for another machine, paste it in there, you start up uh, your cocoon, and it'll automatically install the plugin manager. So that's also nice. Now you'll see here, out of the box, uh, Cocoon doesn't have this power line. This is a plugin. So I went ahead and installed it. So this is uh, powerline.cac. So I copied this part, put it over here, um, in here. Okay, now th this particular plugin gives you special directions on how to install it. So with plug.cac, you just copy this in. Now I will note that some of these plugins haven't been updated in a while. Some of them don't work. So you're going to have to test that out for your particular plugin. Let's go through installing another plugin though. Uh, and let's go through installing auto pairs for Cocoon. Because that's a nice little plugin. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to copy this and uh, actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here, take this, take that, and I'm going to go, let's go down to the bottom of the file, GJ, and then we'll insert with uh, O there, and I'm just going to type plug, and oh, another trick, this is near the bottom of the screen, and in Vim, if I was in insert mode, and I wanted to move this line that I'm typing on to the middle of the screen, I would do control O, Z, Z. Control O puts you in normal mode for one uh, command. ZZ recenters the line that you're typing on or the line where the cursor is at the center of the screen. Cocoon has a similar way of doing that, but it's different keys. So it's Alt semicolon. Let me do that. Alt semicolon VV. Okay. So instead of Control O ZZ, Alt semicolon VV. Okay. So let's now paste in the plugin here. Let's write and quit. Go back into here. And I could have sourced that, but anyways. Uh, so now I'm just going to run the command plug install and it installed. So now if I quit and I go to back to the blogs and back to um, the, the resource I was working on, uh, I can run a command, which is, I believe, enable, yep, enable auto pairs. Okay, so what does this do? So if I type the opening square brace, it gives me the closing one, okay? If I type in opening parentheses, let me go back to insert, it gives me the closing parentheses and so on. Um, then want to do curly braces, you can do that as well, okay? So it gives you that opening and closing brackets. Now, let's say I want to turn this off, which I might. So I can go back here and I can disable auto pairs. So now when I type an opening parentheses, it's just an opening parentheses. Okay, so that's what that plugin does. You can try it out with different plugins. Now, one thing you might not use plugins for is color schemes, okay? So there are additional color schemes, although not nearly as many as Vim, um, but there are some. So if we look up at Cocoon color schemes here. And uh, we go here and we want to install, let's say, Dracula, right? So what we can do is we can go to the raw version here, uh, the Dracula.cac. We can go save as, go into our Linux files here, and we want to go into showing our hidden files. And we want to go into the config here and into CAC. And we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it colors. Okay. And within that, I'm going to drop the .txt extension. So it's just .cac and I'm going to save. Okay. So now, and it should be pretty much immediate. So if I escape and go to color scheme, and you'll see now that I have Dracula and I can change it to the Dracula color scheme. Okay, so that's installing color schemes. Pretty easy. Uh, some of the color schemes, however, don't quite work 100%. 
uh, you're going to have to test those out because I do, I do have some ones that have errors and so on and so forth. Anyways, I think I'm going to wrap it up at this point. Um, there is a blog I wrote on Cocoon. I'll leave that in the uh, description below. Uh, that might give you a little bit more um, information on this text editor. I want to thank you for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a like as it will help get out to more people. Um, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as well as it really helps the channel grow. And I want to thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.